Star Wars Holdouts is my completely fan-made series, and this is season four out of four, so it's like the final one, and if you haven't seen seasons one through three, I highly recommend going watching them. Or don't. But anyway, here's on to season four. Episode 1 is called Beyond Reason, and in 16 BBY, rebels who have been inspired by Saw Gerrera's methods of extremism decide to attack the Empire and destroy a town's power stations on the planet Edu. The 501st Legion is called in under Commander Bo and arrive in the town to find a cheering population to help them restore the power. The 501st successfully defeat the rebels after a mountain campaign, however after their victory Tarkin arrives with TK troopers and executes the town to build a new facility there with Director Krennic. Episode 2 is titled Discovery, and on the planet Dre 2, the Separatist extremist groups have bombed an imperial housing complex of innocent people and starts to massacre many of the population in the capital city, claiming it to be the new capital of their Separatist alliance and declares a widespread rebellion against the Empire. The Empire responds by orbitally bombarding Dre 2, killing many Separatist terrorists, armories, and civilians, which is followed by a ground assault with the ground troops. Darth Vader personally leads the ground attack, and while he was easily cutting through Separatists, he came across a river near a destroyed Jedi Temple. In the river, due to the low tide, Vader saw and claimed the Gauntlet of Kresh, the Younger, on his right glove and used it to protect himself from a Separatist suicide bomber, who was the last terrorist on the planet. The Separatist extremist attack then inspires Saw Gerrera to even further his extremist methods to try to outdo the Separatists. In episode 3, titled Complicated Reasons, Saw Gerrera develops an equation to help justify his terrorism where he seeks to do terrible acts and have the Empire over-respond to make the lives of ordinary people worse so that they turn against the Empire. Gerrera's partisan then decides to test out their new justifications for violent political conflict on the Separatist holdout world of Castel, which was controlled by the Commerce Guild. Guerrero ruthlessly bombs restaurants, assassinates major political leaders, and conducts random shootings of civilians over the course of a week to draw a massive response from the Separatists. Guerrero and his partisan then leave the planet and plan to return in a month to oversee a public uprising. However, clone rebels under the command of Commander Blackout then arrive on the planet to liberate it from the Separatist rule after a week of the partisan's brutal attacks. Blackout and his troops topple the Separatists and support a new regime and are very welcomed by the population. Episode 4, titled Time Dilation, has a task force of 5th Fleet security troopers sent to Wild Space to track a missing Imperial supply ship which was hijacked by Separatist insurgents. They pass through a celestial anomaly which appears to have only taken a few minutes and board the hijacked ship where they easily kill and capture all of the Separatist rebels and free the captured crew. They leave through the anomaly and discover that they had actually gone in time 20 years when the Empire is facing a full-scale civil war against the Rebel Alliance. Episode 5 is called Burning Star, and an Imperial commando team is called in to rescue a hijacked cruiser full of workers in the outer rim that is loaded with Rhydonium that has been taken over by Separatist rebels. The commandos board the ship using an old Separatist shuttle and reactivated commando droids in a platoon to land into the cruiser. The commando droids leave the shuttle and enter the cruiser, claiming to be reinforcements from the Unknown Regions, and some of the Separatists go on the shuttle, while the rest are in the hangar and the bridge of the ship. The commandos are now aboard, and they kill the Separatists on the shuttle, and the commandos also execute the hijackers in the hangar. The commando droids then rescue the hostages and kill the hijackers on the bridge without casualties. The Empire then responds by orbitally bombarding the former CIS planet of Ithismus, which was where the hijackers were from. Episode 6 is titled Corporate Control, and Preex Morlana security forces on Morlana 4 respond to a rebel attack. The Corpos then discover that the rebel attack was actually a robbery committed by former clone commandos who hijacked a train loaded with credits. A battle then ensues at another train station where the four commandos steal a car loaded with credits by using a Republic attack shuttle. The commandos defeat the corpos relatively easily and escape to bring the funds to a 182nd Legion rebel cell on the planet Felucia following the previous Imperial invasion and withdrawal from the planet. In episode 7 titled The Convoy, the Empire sends an armored convoy of stormtroopers to Kashyyyk to collect fuel from a refinery after Imperial shuttles were being shot down by Wookiee resistance fighters armed with rocket launchers. Stormtroopers with tanks landed at Kachiro Beach and drive through the beach to the jungle, seeing the remains of Vader's previous arrival. The convoy was attacked several times as they made their way to the refinery 
by the Wookiee Resistance, and they eventually arrived and loaded their fuel to make the trek back through hostile territory. All but two of the rear fuel transports successfully get back to the beach and are transported off-world. The two captured transports are inspected by a clone commando, Sev, who then loads the fuel outside of the Imperial Refinery and destroys a walker station as Sev wages a guerrilla war, since being left behind. In Episode 8, called Lies and Deception, Hondo Onaka and hired clones land on the planet Florum to supply themselves with weapons from Hondo's previous criminal empire to go on a job to steal kyber crystals from an Imperial construction yard. They find the planet under occupation by Saw Gerrera's partisan and controlling Hondo's fortress. Hondo and his crew land outside the compound's radar and sneak through a secret underground tunnel that Hondo had built as an escape route that connects to the weapon's vault. Once inside, they extract their weapons with minimal partisan casualties after they stealthily get in without being noticed by the rest of the partisan unit. However, Saw Gerrera enters the weapons vault after it had been burgled by Hondo and the boys, and Gerrera orders an immediate lockdown and search. Two partisan ships find Hondo's ship, and they relay locations back to the partisan before being shot down by clones armed with bazookas. Once Hondo and the gang take off, the partisan arrives and tries to shoot down the ship without any success. Episode 9 is called Snatch, and Hondo and his crew deliver the weapons to Rex and prepare to raid a Separatist holdout on the Outer Rim planet of Wadia, which is full of Rhydonium and more weapons. Rex got the information from a third party who wants half of whatever they get, and the pirates and clones wipe out the Separatist holdout, which was protected by battle droids and commanded by a Nemoyan who was formerly a guard for the Trade Federation. They then take the Rhydonium and weapons from the Separatists for themselves, but also find additional shield generators and hacking equipment to give to the client. Once the delivery has been made to Rex, they meet with Luthen, who has plans to give the generators and hacking equipment to other rebel cells in the Outer Rim, and kind of makes hints that he wants a unified rebellion. In episode 10, titled False Flags, a Separatist terrorist attack occurs and destroys an Imperial mining center in the Mid-Rim when the workers were out celebrating the New Year, and Task Force 99 is sent in under the command of Sergeant Creel to eradicate the Separatist leaders. Task Force 99 wastes the Separatist encampments, which has been low on quality equipment and has little weapons. After they destroy the insurgents, it is revealed that Grand Moff Tarkin had perpetrated the attack to speed up the process of destroying the Separatist group to increase his funding for the Tarkin Doctrine and take away resources from other areas of Imperial work. Episode 11 is called Desperate Times, and in 15 BBY, Saw Gerrera and his partisans attack a Separatist holdout on the planet of Barton 4, and the Separatist insurgents have taken over a former Imperial facility which Gerrera wants to use as a striking point to muster his partisan to attack Kashyyyk. The partisans start with a small air campaign and send down transports. The Separatists shoot down a few transports, but the partisans land outside of the facility and use mortars to soften up the already weakened Separatists before assaulting the base. Guerrera takes the base with losses that were acceptable to him and prepares an attack to Kashyyyk. In episode 12, called Desperate Measures, Saw Guerrera attacks an Imperial refinery on Kashyyyk with his partisan. The Imperials start a counterattack with AT-ATs, but the Partisan are aided by former Jedi Padawan Cal Kestis. After the Rebel victory, Vader and the 501st Legion return to Kashyyyk and find a different Jedi who they kill at the refinery, believing the Jedi to have been the one who was reported to have been with the Partisans. So in other words, they mistake this other Jedi for Cal Kestis. The remaining Partisans are also killed by the Empire as Saw Gerrera escapes. Guerrera furthers his extremist techniques as the last Separatist holdouts are being defeated by the Empire, and he decides to attack a Wookiee village on Kashyyyk and frame it as an Imperial assault to boost his image outside for recruitment of the Partisan. However, Sev records the Partisan attack while he was hiding in the jungle. Episode 13 is titled Relic of the Past, and on the Malachor system, a Separatist shuttle carrying Krieger and his Separatist rebels chart a path to Malachor 1 to make a deal for advanced weapons. On the surface, the shuttle lands and the occupants go under the surface to find an abandoned Sith superweapon temple from the Old Republic era and the remains of a battle. They also meet with Darth Maul to make their trade deal with his criminal organization. An ISB agent is within Maul's criminal empire and a force of Imperial stormtroopers and inquisitors arrive on the planet and are called in for an ambush. Krieger himself gets away while most of his separatists are killed or captured and Maul kills an Inquisitor as he makes his way back to a ship, and most of his criminals are also killed. 
In episode 14, titled Fallen Order, an Imperial landing party arrives on the planet Zepho to survey the planet during the occupation and uncovers the secrets of the Zepho. There they find a downed Venator, former Jedi Knight Chiata, and the 167th Battalion's remains which are respectfully buried by Imperial officers Gideon and Jer Gerard. They also find a map with an old Zepho architecture and follow it to the Unknown Regions where they discover that long ago the Zepho had encountered both the Vagari and the Yuzang Vong, but were all defeated by the Chiss. The Imperials and Chiss make an informal alliance during a space battle against the Yuzang Vong small scouting party which has been defeated, and the Chiss decide to remain isolated in the Unknown Regions, but still have this informal alliance with the Empire. Episode 15 is called Lost, and a former Republic militia and Separatist militia join forces to launch an offensive against an Imperial Intelligence Center in the Outer Rim. The Empire responds by sending a fleet and a legion of stormtroopers to root out the militias, but one of the Imperial transports has been damaged in its hyperdrive from a Separatist kamikaze attack, and the ship gets lost in hyperspace where it encounters Grand Moff Odile Viking's Imperial cruiser from 5,000 years ago, which had been lost in hyperspace during a campaign to conquer an alien world and was hit in the bridge and its hyperdrive. Although the militias are mostly captured and defeated, those that escape bring information to Saul Guerrero, who, who they all believe to have been the hero on Kashyyyk. Meanwhile, Guerrero promptly executes the Separatists and offers the Republic militiamen to join his partisan as he claims that the Separatists were ISB without having any evidence. In episode 16, titled The Gladiator, Dantooine sees an Imperial survey expedition leaving the planet, and they call out a distress call after they come under attack by a using Vong scouting party. An Imperial fleet arrives and destroys the scouting party with an Executor-class Super Star Destroyer. However, after the battle, a using Vong fighter that is piloted by a using Vong warrior crash lands on Dantooine. The warrior is then taken out of his ship by Dantooine criminals and placed in captivity. He then becomes a fighter and enjoys killing his foes as a gladiator as nobody can understand what the warrior is saying as he's an alien and a far outsider. Episode 17 is called Supply Route and the Imperial Exploration Corps is sent to the Outer Rim world of Ebonek to plan a supply route between the planet and Imperial garrisons in the Outer Rim, making Ebonek a supply hub instead of a former prison for Jedi and CIS insurgents. Separatists under Krieger that include reactivated B-2 battle droids attack the Imperial team but are repelled as the Empire sends in stormtroopers, which forces Krieger off-world again as the Empire establishes a supply route. Krieger then meets with Luthen and vaguely threatens him for more weapons and information on an Imperial prison. Episode 18 is called Fallen Jedi, and on the final Separatist holdout in the mid-rim planet of Wobani, it is reinforced by a fleet of banking clan ships and is led by a former Jedi Padawan who survived Order 66, but has since then embraced the dark side of the Force. Darth Vader personally leads the Imperial attack to rid the Empire of the final Separatist holdouts once and for all and with heavy armored units and overwhelming forces. The planet is reduced to mud from bombardment and Vader devastates the population. Dark Troopers are then sent into the planet in order to cause as much destruction as possible to the infrastructure while sparing the lives of many civilians as they can. In a final duel, the former Padawan uses Sith Lightning against Vader after having his lightsaber crushed by the Sith Lord. Darth Vader easily deflects the lightning as he slowly walks up to the fallen Jedi and decapitates him. Vader then uses the former Citadel as a prison to hold former Separatists and Rebels. Episode 19 is titled A New Campaign and is the season finale, as well as the series finale. And on Kashyyyk, Sev boards a Republic attack shuttle and travels to the planet Lola Seyu, where the Clone Rebellion has made their temporary rallying point. There, Luthen tries to convince Rex to conduct a joint attack with Sagarera's partisan to better link up the rebel cells. But Sev shows his recording of the partisan slaughtering a Wookiee village and Rex declines opting to keep the Clone Rebellion independent of any other rider or rebel alliance as he doesn't want to be associated with extremist groups. While clone forces are mustering, they all decide that their target will be Droman Kos to free clone prisoners who are being forcefully turned into dark troopers. All clone rebel groups arrive on Lola Seyu from many different units and prepare their attack using a fleet of Venators, Acclimators, Dreadnought-class cruisers, Victory-class Star Destroyers, a Praetor-class heavy cruiser, two Maelstrom-class Dreadnoughts, and a Mandator class capital ship. The ground attack is to be led by Commander Cody and Wolf while Rex leads the space attack. The clone fleet comes out of hyperspace over Droman Kos and catches the Imperial defensive fleet completely off guard and annihilates the Imperials. 
The ground attack came swiftly afterwards with a gunship charge at Silo's facility, where upon landing, many stormtroopers surrendered to the sheer force of the clone attack. Inside, Commander Cody executes Silo in his lab, and the dark troopers are all freed where they join the clone rebellion, and as Rex and Cody state that there are more clones in need of their support, they prepare to fully equip themselves and prepare many more attacks against any other Imperial facilities that are holding clone troopers or against Imperial units that have clones unwillingly in them. In a post credit scene, Palpatine oversees a silo body being activated and tells him that the clones have become a threat to the Empire and this threat must remain secret, as well as that not even Darth Vader can know the full extent of the Clone Rebellion as he fears that Darth Vader may have questionable loyalty regarding the clones. And that is the end of my four-season Star Wars series. What do you think of it? Let me know in the comments, and thank you for watching.